everybody, welcome to another edition of the Two Dudes Podcast. I'm Rick, along with my co-host Kevin. What's good, Kevin? Uh, nothing much. Listen to the rain outside. Glad I'm inside because it's coming down like a mofo out there. Really? We got a little yeah. bit of sprinkles and that was it. Oh, no, we getting lightning, thunder, hail, all that. All that mm-hmm. shit. Glad I'm not you right now. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out if I left my window cracked or not, but I ain't went out to figure it out. So I'll deal with it tomorrow. That's so. Hey, um, this podcast episode is called Be Better. Uh, on an individual basis, what we as men, especially men of a certain age, can do to be better. So um, first of all, I want to welcome everybody to the podcast and For those who are uh, new to the podcast, I'm an artist and photographer, uh, do a little writing on the side, and Kevin is a DJ, and for this episode, if you need us for any photography or DJ needs, I will uh, try to get our uh, contact information in the description, and as far as uh, this whole becoming better thing, I had been thinking about it over the last couple of days because, like it or not, we are in the middle of November. There's only a month and a half left of this year, so we kind of want to get the jump on 2022. So, again, as youngish black men, I'm going to say youngish, even though we not, we men of a certain no, age. I'm young. You're, you're not. Don't, don't let my premature gray fool you. This shit ain't premature. It's been there. Don't be giving all my secrets away. Anyway, uh, first things first, because when you break it down to being better, and, and I suppose this can apply towards women as well, but I'm just thinking of it from our point of view, no pun intended, for those that have been with the podcast since the beginning. Uh, I'm breaking it down into three different things. Health and fitness, fashion, and then overall goals for 2022. So I want to start with health and fitness. What the hell is fashion got to do with anything? I'm going to get to that. It's got everything. Okay, yeah, help me understand that one. It's it's got everything to do with it. But uh, as far as health and fitness, I know that we've had some episodes where we've talked about physical problems and things like that. And uh, first, let's get that update from you on your health, how everything's doing, how you feeling. Uh, I, um, I feel good, you know, finally. Well, not finally, I've been feeling good, so I shouldn't say finally. Feel good, doctor appointment today. Once I finally got another doctor, these damn doctors switching offices like they don't know how to stay somewhere. So that that's a little irritating. But then you're like, you need to call every six months, make sure your doctor's there, because you realistically only go once a year unless you get sick or something. And so I had to meet a new doctor after having a new doctor back in sep- August, September or whatever. And uh, everything was good. BP was good. All my uh, levels and stuff, what it's supposed to be. I went and got the flu shot because I'm a part-time required. Then I had the, you want me to give them urine and some more blood to make sure some other things was right, but I already know that stuff is good. He just, him being new, he wanted to make sure everything is good on his watch. So decided to get poked and prodded again, but I don't know everything came out great, eh? And I just got to keep pushing forward, doing what I'm doing. I meet with my trainer three times a week, and it ain't been no joke. Uh, I worked out so hard yesterday. I sat on the couch and didn't realize that I woke up two hours later. And this is why I say that you're older than me. No, no, I was tired, and I hit that comfortable spot, and lights out. So what does your uh, workouts consist of with your personal trainer? I just, it depends. Every day is something different. We, uh, we're trying to build things up, you know, get my flexibility back. And okay, just, so he's building a base with y'all. Yeah, just, okay. you know, getting, waking muscles up that, you know, been dormant because I ain't been active enough, and it's, you know, starting to do what it's supposed to do, you know. It's definitely a, um, it's not a sprint, you know what I'm saying? It's just like a mile or whatever, how you want to put it. 
yeah, it, it, it is, but uh, you got to stay the course. Yeah. Um, as far as fitness, do you have any goals with it? You know, just <laughs> all those things. I'm real ignorant. Um, just you know, stay healthy and keep going in the right direction. You know, don't look back. Keep going forward. That's cool. Um, still got the knee brace on, but uh, I started running again last week. So, so far, so good. No swelling, no pain. I think right now it's on there more of as a crutch. Um, could probably go without it, but I don't want to yet because I want to make sure that everything is a okay and all right because I don't want any more setbacks. I'm already looking into um, next year, trying to get my races lined up. And uh, one of my goals that I wanted to do this year, but couldn't for various reasons, I'd like to do next year. I'd like to do uh, a couple of Spartan races, obstacle course races. You have fun with that. You, you got to be, you got to be a tough man to do something like that. And, I plan on doing that, you know. You say so. You got to be ass backwards to do it. That's what I say. You got to be physically and mentally strong. Um, physically strong, know. mentally crazy, you know, whichever. One of these days, up. one of these days, you might get that bug. i uh, tell you what. You remember uh, Big Show? One of our uh -huh. frequent guests on there? Yeah. His wife and him went to New York. They did the, well, they, not they. She did the New York City Marathon. Oh, wow. 26 miles of ooey gooey goodness. Yeah, I'm good on it, 26 miles. But this, this is what I'll say. If I'm at a certain weight by summertime, I'll do a race with you. Now, now full, disclosure, race. Full, full disclosure to everybody, Kevin has already run a race with me. Yeah, we yeah. did a color run a couple years back. That shit so was fun. That shit was it was fun. a five k, so you did three miles right there. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. But like I said, I'm not gonna do it at Joe pace. I'm doing it at mine. But I'll well, be there with you. Right now, I would say this: your pace is probably my pace right now because uh, these last few days I've been running really, really slow. I just want to make sure that everything works before mm -hmm. I start putting it in gear. I understand. You know, now, they have um, a 5K on the scooter. I'm all about that. <laughs> I, I, I figured that I could run uh, a couple weeks back because I uh, was able to uh, push some weight on the squat rack in the morning. So, um, you know, I figured once I could do that and not have any problems, yeah, a run ain't going to be no problem. So I'm going to keep squatting, deadlifts, uh, especially the uh, left knee, try to uh, build the muscles back up and um get my endurance up too because that's what uh hurt me uh running the other day uh and that's why my times are so slow Ooh, i i gotta stop and catch my breath every once in a while i've been running a couple miles uh here and there three days a week and starting next week i'm gonna push it to three miles and keep gradually going up after that and, and like i said my goals for next year I, I want to do a uh, obstacle course race, uh, at, at least get through uh, a full season of runs. Uh, I'm 52, so tomorrow's not promised to us, so I got to get it yeah. out there and do it. You almost now, said double nickel. Yeah, don't tell me. Yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. Mm. By the way, um, even though this uh, show comes out on Thursdays, uh, Oh yeah, it does come out on third. Tomorrow is Thursday. I keep forgetting that we, yeah, we usually record. No, we usually record on Tuesdays, folks. We're recording on a Wednesday. So yeah, my job schedule is hating right now. That's yeah, that, that's at fifty-two. In you. Since so you're fifty-two, how old is the missus? That's what I'm getting to. Okay. Today, she's forty-four. Tomorrow, okay. she's forty-five. So as of the date of this broadcast, happy birthday, birthday, Heather. Yeah. Oh, uh, so. So you're a panther then. A what? You're a panther. Women are cougars, men are panthers. 
You literally are Black Panther. <laughs> I, I got nothing. I got nothing. All uh, right. So we done broke down fitness. Now we want to get to the one that Kevin was questioning. Fashion. Deion Sanders said it best. Look good. Feel good. Feel good. Play good. It is to me, and it always has been all about how you look. I don't always wear a t-shirt and a hat. Sometimes my bald head is clean shaven and, you know, my beard is trimmed just right. I love and I prefer slacks over jeans. I prefer polos or button downs over t-shirts. That's just the way I've always been. And, you know, working every day, I realize you can't do that all the time, but that's just the way I am. That's what I like. That's what I want to do. And, and, and I really do subscribe to that look good, feel good thing. And that's why I brought up fashion. But when I say fashion, it ain't like going down the runway fashion. None of that. It's just about looking your best uh, every day. And you, as a single man out on the prowl, <laughs> Come on, we already established that retirement is only for uh, Social Security age, so you ain't retired from nothing. You you see the right one out there, you're going to make strides. It's only natural. You're a man. Now, I need an intervention because I've been petty at some of the things I see. I need. A, I, I told Tim today, I need intervention because the little things, I'll be like, no, no, I'm good. Bro, you know what you remind me of right now? What? Eddie Murphy on Boomerang. I'm serious. He couldn't, he could, he found something wrong with every woman. I could That's picture true. you, I could picture you waking up next to somebody pulling the sheets down, looking at the size of her feet. <laughs> I saw this chick at the gig. I was like, not bad. I was like, uh, I don't like her hairstyle. I was like, uh, she got the, she got the jiggly on. I, I can't work with that. So, I mean, just. Wow. Yeah. You, I say it like I'm slim or something. You know, that's, that's what makes it even worse, you know. You you got to reel it in, bro. Reel it in. I just, I ain't, I ain't saw nothing that makes me be like, all right, you know what? Yeah, it's just. I will say this in your defense. Mm -hmm. Especially after you, you, you look online at all this stuff. And, and you see what some of the, not all these females, but some of them are about, I feel you. Because a lot of this fakeness is out there. Yeah. And it's like, hey, look at me. Look at what I look like. And you know damn well you don't look like that at home when the lights are off and the doors closed. Or you get told, you got to share me with three other people, you know? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going there, bro. <laughs> uh, this is where you you think like, right, Ricola, no. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Um, oh. But you know, back back to fashion. Um, jokes aside. Um, also, what I talk about when I talk about clothing to you is what we wear. You know, I hey, I used to wear just as many Jordans as anybody. My sister will tell you. She could tell you Ricky, because that's what she called me. Ricky used to have a different pair of Jordans for every day of the month. As I've gotten older, there's two reasons why you won't see me in a pair of Jordans. One, they look ugly now, all these models that come out. Now, I, I might get with a retro every now and then, but, you know, all this multicolor stuff, it's just not me. It's not for men of a certain age. I can dress casual mm -hmm. without looking like I'm trying to look like I'm still 18. Well, it depends on what color and what J's. Like the last ones, I can't remember what number they are. They didn't look too, because Nelson got a pair. They didn't look too bad. But it's just, when you wear 13, 14, you, it, just, it ain't going to look right. So you got to kind of just let that go on by because it, it ain't going to look right, at least not in my opinion. Um, the Jordan world, I noticed there's a split. The, you know, the old school is like yourself. Y'all yeah. like, like Jordan 1 through like maybe 15. 
But then it's like the new schoolers, they like 20 through whatever's current. No, Those 1 points. through 23 was nice. Well, it's, it's like there's a split to where y'all definitely do the retros or whatever. Y'all will very rarely buy the new ones. Like, it's for me, just, the only ones I've ever liked is the 11s. Those are the only ones I've ever liked. The and these last done. ones, they wasn't too bad. But like I said, the way they shaped, I just couldn't see my big-ass foot in. I didn't like that big old circular window between the toes and the heel. I, I well, didn't like that look. Yeah, and uh, there's like a kind of like a funny – like it's almost like where your arch is at kind of thing. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So it's like they is giving hella support. And from what Tim and Nelson have told me, they are hella light. Hella light. But yeah, that, that's because they hardly use any leathers at all anymore. It's it's just those uh material stuff. Yeah, you know, everything because you know you on the court, they want you want to be light on your feet. Yeah, so that and um, you know, men like us probably shouldn't be running around with shirts with logos all over them. Now, granted, yes, I'm sitting up here wearing a Nike shirt that has runs flatted across my chest, but it is a running shirt. I am a runner. There's a time and there's a place. I am not going to, you know, roll into the job with a, a shirt on it that says uh, Gucci all over it or some kind of other logo or anything like that. Uh we're men of a certain age. We have to be more subdued. We're not I eighteen. Old man in you. You're not, not eighteen, not even, Kevin. You're not eighteen. Oh, no, it's not even about being eighteen. It's just, you know, back in my my I guess you say my younger days, I had a mindset of I don't want to be nobody's walking advertisement. But now it's virtually impossible because it's so much shit from here to there. Kevin. Or, Kevin. Right. 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 You're going to be challenged with the, the voice, the box. But it's just, it's so many different things you can, so many different brands, basically. And a lot of them are, you know, if anything, it's more of a color thing than a design nowadays. Everything is bright. I remember when I went to visit Tony in Charlotte and we went to the mall. Every shoe store had like tropical Skittle colors of shoes. I ended up at the Jordan outlet getting a pair of Team Jordans in black and gray. <laughs> now, I will say that I'm, I'm down with the black, the white, the red, black, white, and red. It doesn't matter. Um, I did have a pair of J Jordans before that were white and blue. Those were kind of fly. You know which ones I'm talking about, the ones with the shroud mm -hmm. that was on them? Yeah, I had a pair of them. My, my favorite pair of Jordans, though, were the number – I think they were 21s. Uh, they were red suede Jordans. Love that shoe. I like, like I said, the, the 11s are my favorite. And I think if not those, maybe the ones that he wore in... Because he, no, he wore the 11s in Space Jam, right? I think so. I it, suppose it, another one that he wore before that or whatever. Uh, it was not, hey, see, I don't know the fucking number. That shows you how much of a fan I'm not. So it's the 11 is another pair that I like that Buzz would wear. I, I can't, I've seen them. And a lot of people I know got them. I like, they, I like the all black ones. They were cool. Yeah, they, they were nice. Um, my favorite all time, I don't even know if you remember these, the 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 uh twos yeah they were more casual dressy looking but i've loved that shoe the twos the ones all them shits was ugly they was big and but then again looking back look how big and bulky the converses were then so it, it fits the twos wasn't bulky i still felt like they was they were it, just I mean, simple it, and streamlined before they started yeah. adding the elephant skin and the patent leather and all that you, know, you gotta keep up with the design and the trend I mean, mm -hmm. really, you know, people don't want to admit this. If you look at the Jordan 1 and you look at Magic Johnson's Converse, I ain't really that big of a difference. They both was big, bulky, and ugly. But, you know, you said in the street you get killed. So I can say it on here because ain't nobody coming in my damn house. Yeah, ain't nobody coming in my damn house. 
By the way, Kevin's address, it, no. It, I wish a motherfucker would. I got two killers in here. Hey, no. sleep right now, but they're killers. Closing out uh, fashion, though, accessories is huge. Anybody nice who knows me, person. anybody who knows me, though, my hat got to match my shirt. My watch has to match what I'm wearing. Got a bracelet on the other wrist. It's got to match. You will never see me not coordinate. If the shoes and the shoe, if shoes and the hat don't match, or the shoes and the shirt, I, I ain't wearing them together. I just won't do it. You know, I have a pair of uh, orange running shoes. Warm to work today. Warm with an orange shirt. Somebody say, "Oh, that looks good together." Well, yeah, that's that's the whole point. You ain't gonna see me wearing no blue shirt. Sounding ass up. What? So if you don't shut your giant the weather's bone sounding ass up, I wore an orange shoe with an orange shirt. It went together. Yeah. Got to coordinate. <laughs> That's how the fuck you think about right now. You got to coordinate. I tried to wear a watch a few weeks ago, and I, I'm i disappointed. I felt disgusted. I just, I couldn't. Bro, men of a certain age wear a watch. You look like a little. Watch you look, for life for the longest. Bro, you look like a little fanboy if you're out here without a watch on. What time is it? Oh, let me pull out my phone. Let me pull out my phone. Your phone is for making calls. You go like, bam, it's eight o'clock. You know, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I was just like, and you know, make it so bad. I just got that G-Shock watch from the, from the gig. That's right. In the box, sitting. Hey, you remember that Belova that I showed you? Yeah. Yeah, I bet you if you had that, you'd be wearing it. I don't know. I got to get, see, that's the, that's the negative Lord, I got to get a new co-host. <laughs> that, that, that's the negative from working from home. When you work from home, you're the biggest form of a mentalist because you never leave. Like, right now, I thought I was going to leave early to take the girls to their mom, but they had already left. Bastards didn't tell me, but they had already left. So it's just like, I'm t-shirt, sweats, and house shoes every day, unless I got to go somewhere. So it's like, when you work home, you're the biggest mentalist you can be. Because you don't need anything. So it's like, you ain't gonna wear no watch because you well, wear, you're wearing Let me, let me ask you this. Let me ask nowhere. you this then. All right, you know what I do for a living. So I'm wearing a t shirt and jeans most of the time. Yeah. But when I'm off work and I wanna go somewhere, I don't care if I'm just going to, you know, shopping. I wanna look good. Well, see, key word, what'd you say? Go somewhere. When you work from home, you go nowhere unless you have to. And now I'm saying you go work two, three days straight to where you ain't leaving the crib because you ain't got nowhere to go. You ain't got no reason. A lot of times you go places because you're already out and your mind gets to wander. You're like, oh, shit, let me go and do this since I'm over here. When you just at home, you literally work. If you got what you need at the crib, you're chilling once you get off. And it's like you're not about to get fully dressed because you're working from home. I got one. I just got a friend, though. Um... We got her for Val. She works for a bank. Her husband told me, though, she actually does get up and get fully dressed and get her coffee and everything. She's the only motherfucker I know to do that. Everybody else knows work from home. Their clothing attire is their pajamas or T-shirt and sweats or T-shirt and shorts and house shoes across the board. Hmm. I don't know, man. I, I, I'm like, working from home just makes me fucking lazy. I ain't even go front. Yeah, I wasn't gonna say. I'm glad you said it because I I was just no, gonna no, say we just true. agreed. That's why I ended up in my whole situation a part of it because I wasn't doing shit. I was literally sitting at a table for ten hours. Just literally, I get up, take two steps to the, to the refrigerator because I'm already in the kitchen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then it's like, and if I didn't have the girls, I didn't have shit to do. So it was like when you work from home, you literally will lose track of the day sometimes. And you like, know what? Oh, I guess like how's the weather? And I'll be like, I ain't stepped outside yet. I don't know. And you know how my basement is. The windows are nowhere by me. So I don't know if the sun's out or anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know anything. See, and that's the difference between me and you. I don't think I could handle that. Um, I've always got to be doing something. You know, work from home or not. If I work from home, as soon as this quitting time, I want to go somewhere for a little bit. I want to do something. Uh, you know. Aside from going for a run, if I want to, you know, go see a movie or 
go out to eat or something like that. I can make of a million reasons not to be the, home. The, 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 the point that you're missing is you're planning to do that. You're not going to plan to do something every day. So there's going to be times where you just go chill. Yeah. And when you just chill, you ain't worried about putting on the watch. You ain't worried about that this match up or whatever. You just go be in chill mode like you would be on a Sunday when you're watching football and you ain't got shit to do. And that's true, go. but but when you are ready to get out of that chill mode. Yeah, when something. you are ready, then you go, you go, oh, I ain't wore this in a while. You getting dressed. But like I'm saying is you spend so much time at home, you'll put in the effort to get dressed, mm -hmm. but it won't be like it would have been if you was consistently working out from out the house. Right. That's why right. I kind of don't mind some of these jobs I'm applying for and what they're trying to do now to be slick. They're telling you, oh, you'll be a hybrid. You'll work from home Monday and Wednesday. You'll be in the office Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Just say you're working from home two days a week. Just say that. That, that hybrid shit is dumb. Well, you know they got to make it sound corporate. Yeah. Try to make it sound sexy. Or you like, oh, shit. If somebody had common sense, you was doing that shit before the pandemic. Remember, I was at home three days a week before the pandemic happened. I mean, you know, everybody's going to do whatever they can to make their their job sound wonderful. I mean, yeah. the garbage man will say he's not a garbage man. He's a sanitation engineer. Or I remember the first time I heard a custodian say they're environmental services. I said, nigga, what environment mm -hmm. are you serving? What, what please tell me. <laughs> I like that, environmental services. That's what they hey, that's what they say. All right. So uh closing out the topic, goals for 2022. Since you got a little over 45 days before this year's up, what do you plan on accomplishing next year? Next year for me, Lord willing, well, before next year, just period. I'm looking for a a move up at the current gig or a better gig. I gotta start you know, challenging myself before I lose myself. You know, before I lose that mental edge of this knowledge that I got up in this current year. Um, so better gig, either move up or move out, whichever one happens. And stop being petty. Stop being petty when it comes to, you know, oh, I don't like her hair. I like, you know, trying to, <laughs> trying to bring in the petty, trying to bring in the petty. And I think, and I'm not sure if I'm really going to do it, I think I want to try to have at least two to three gigs every month, or maybe somewhere between two to five gigs a month. I want to try to do that probably between like a, a February to like October frame or whatever. So when the holidays come, I can just sit back and chill unless I want to do something. So I'm, I just got uh, today, matter of fact, before we got on, I got hit up to do this non for profit in fucking June. I was like, cool, good cause, I'll gladly do it. So you know, trying to get the ball rolling on that and about to see if I can uh, navigate to where I might possibly get some radio work going. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get the side hustle to where it's, uh, it grows that much more because I can't front. I thank God the past, and you know, the past two months have been big. I yeah. made up for not doing that now all year in the past two months. And I'm very hey. thankful and grateful for that. That's what it's all about. You know, next yacht party, though. Yeah, yeah, photographer or not, you need to take that. Me. was a beautiful thing. Thanks again for that. But yeah, the no next problem. one, you know, it, that, that shit was wild. And, and speaking of that, you know, my goals for 2022, I want to, you know, try to sit down and do more artwork and work on more photography, but also want to work on um, being better, you know, when it comes to uh, these podcasts and my other uh, YouTube channel for the movie reviews, you know. Uh, just hone my craft, make us a little bit better so that we can begin to grow. You know, we, we are past 85 episodes now, so now it's time to look to the future and grow and get better and also want to work on my mental health. Um, you know how you said you need to stop being petty? Yeah. I think that lately I'm kind of an asshole to people. You've been one. I'm more of an asshole. I mean, you, you got to pull an asshole -ness. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I, I just there are how do I put this? BPC. There are some people 
at the job that will get on your nerves. Mm -hmm. And you either want to put your foot so deep in their ass they shit in tennis shoe for the rest of their life, or you take a deep breath and you say, hey, that person's the way they're going to be. Just do your thing. Yeah. I got to be more of that and less of the first. It's one of the things where I think we're all assholes. Just as you get older, that assholeism grows. Like you start like this, but as the years go, you know, and it's one of the things like I tell people all the time. There's been people being like, man, I can't believe, can't believe that. Now tell them, what would that benefit? You know, because everybody wants you to be fired up and rah, rah, rah. Because, like, because I cuss, you know, I can't help it. Shit comes out just like that. Motherfuckers quickly be like, oh, man, he's he's mean. He's this. No, I'm really not. It's just when I say things, you're going to understand. You're not going to, it's not going to be a misquote. You're going to know what I'm saying because I don't look at you like tea. I'm not dropping no sugar cube beans. I'm coming straight at you to let you know well, I'm direct, very direct. I'm not going to slide or pussyfoot around it. And that could be perceived as, you know, asshole as a being an uh, angry person. No, it's just we're adults. We should be able to talk like fucking adults. But in some regards, I pulled it back. Because, you know, like now my daughters are older. They kind of notice things a little more. And my youngest called me a bastard. And her mom was like, what is <laughs> like, that is your word. You like calling people. And I was like, well, damn, this little motherfucker paying attention. Then she's going to say, well, they are bastards. We wasn't married yet. I said they're bastard adjacent. We got married while we we was with them. You know, we ended up getting married. I said, ain't like my parents. They said fucking common law marriage. That shit don't count. And so it's just everybody got asshole them. It's just ignoring shit, trying to find a silver lining. Like I had uh, you know, I had the, the work done on the crib, right? Yeah. And my my handy guy was telling talking about water. Y'all like, oh, I know you do that. I need to get a new one at some point. I was like, but the insurance don't want to pay for it till that mother dies. He goes, yeah, they always want to do past job, whatever. And he goes, but I know how to make it die and we can get you another one. The old me about a couple years ago would have been like, let's do it. But since I'm trying to be a better person, I was like, hold up. I ain't got time for that. I'm trying to live a certain kind of life. I appreciate the offer, but we're just going to wait till it actually dies on its own. Oh, you know, you got to pick and choose your moments. Yeah. Now, when the ferns I thought was acting funny and uh, my ferns guy was like, I'll get to you next week. I didn't pick no more. I, I went in. I was like, oh, okay. Got off the phone with him. I was like, yeah, I'll wait till next Man, fuck him. I ain't waiting till next week. I called somebody else. You pick your moments. And then when he called me Friday, talking about I want to check make sure your furnace is good. Motherfucker, I talked to you last Wednesday. I didn't even answer. I sent him a text message. I'm good. Everything working. His response back, cool. Yeah, I ain't fucking with you no more. So you pick your moments. You pick them. Yeah. But I niggas mean, will take you there. They will. They will. Um, I just got to, you know, lengthen my fuse and make sure that well, this time next year, people say, well, you know, Rick used to be kind of an asshole. He's less of an asshole now. I'm still going to say that because you're a Raiders fan. It's, it's in your blood. No, it, it ain't got nothing to do with being a Raiders fan. But I will say this, and, and this is some information before we change to the next topic that all you people out there need to hear. This is according to Rick. Then people that you hang around, whether it be work or social, if they're talking about somebody around you, they're going to be talking about you around them. Just know that. All right, now, real quick, shooting these last few topics real quick. I want to ask you about Will Smith. Have you been reading stuff about Will Smith? Because he's had a different article every day. And I know he's got this book coming out, but Will, he's talking too much. Oh, too much not. personal stuff, man. He, he's doing, here's the thing you have to realize. The man just joined social media like two years ago. He has a lot built in him that he ain't told that. Now it's cool. It's PC, you know, it's, everybody's like, come, come, you know. So he's catching up. And he's trying to get that because, let's be real, there's no lead black male actor right now. So yes, that's why wide open. Yes, there is. Oh. Idris Elba 
Samuel oh. Jackson. No. Samuel got more clout than Will Smith, guarantee it. No. Denzel got more clout than Will Smith, guarantee it. Here's the thing. You take Sam, is Marvel everything. What has he done outside of that lady? Um, the hitman's wife's bodyguard. He's done. Mm -hmm. uh, Which was okay. Man, both those movies were funny as hell. They were okay. But what has he done outside of Marvel? Well, yeah, been on if the you luck. think about it, Marvel's had him pretty busy. I mean, but shit, still, they got a new movie out it. every year. They're outside of the, well, I can't even say this, outside of The Rock, who's doing a bunch of different movies? Mm -hmm. Right exactly. now. Yeah. So I'll give that you spot's that. open. And right now, with the movie theater still looking sketchy, you got to sell yourself more than you sell the movie. So what do you do? I'm going to drop this book two weeks before the movie. So people go read about my life and be invested in me. And then I go on this tour with the Williams sisters, which doesn't really happen often. And they're, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Oh, my God, Will, 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 Will. What does Serena say on Jimmy Kimmel? He did the character so good, had my father's accent down so well, I couldn't remember if I was talking to my father or Richard at some time. You know Will's good at these biopics. So knock it out the park. You set it up everything next that he got coming. Remember, hey, I, I take nothing away movie. from Will Smith, the actor. Will Smith has some good movies. Do I need to know about him getting caught when he was a teenager having sex with his girlfriend by his mother at 4 a.m.? I don't really yeah. need that. No, you need to know that. The reason why you need to know <laughs> no. that is all about relatability. Everything is about relatability. People are like, oh, I've been there before. I understand what you're saying. Is, is look at everybody who's dropped books that have been bio, bi, autobiographies about themselves. They all sell in relatability to where you're going to have a New York bestseller. Like Gabrielle Union, her last book, number one bestseller. She had a book talking about she was knowing what she know now. She wouldn't have got back to D-Way. Why wouldn't you when he made you relevant? I didn't even know she had a book out. All right, real quick, because we got to shut it down soon. Sports. Odell Beckham Jr. <coughs> he got his when papers. Come to Kansas City, that's all that matters. Well, that's what I was going to say. Green Bay, New Orleans, Kansas City, Las Vegas, Seattle, and New England. Those it's are the spots. Where Esther do you think Packers. you're going? It was between us Packers and New England. Saints ain't got a quarterback. Go to one of them other two teams. We don't need your colored hair ass here. Vegas. Y'all can't afford them. We we dealing with Vegas money now. We can afford anything we want. Okay, think that if you want to. Remember. What I think y'all need is his his uh circus when y'all fall in right now. Because if y'all lose us Sunday, y'all season really is in the tag in the trash. I would agree with that part, but I yeah. don't think that um I, I don't think that he's that big of a media circus because uh, he's not the same receiver that he was four years ago. He really is. He just ain't had a chance in Cleveland. When you Jerry Rice and you got Elvis Gerback throwing to you, how much do you go show? True. Yeah, so he still got it in him. He just ain't had a quarterback to get it to him. And when he wants to throw it to him, he got four niggas around him. Now, I will say there's less of a chance – of us getting him because we got Deshaun Jackson already. Yeah, and like I said, y'all need something quiet anyway. Y'all don't have enough media attention. Last yeah. thing you need is all that. Yeah, we don't need any more media attention because we were thoroughly tested the first time we came through. The second time, um, they didn't show up last week. They just didn't. We, we hung with the Giants for a little while, but at the end of the day, we ran out of time. We handled them bitches. You didn't handle them. Y'all barely won against us. I don't want to hear that bullshit. <laughs> it's like Mac and, and remember, said, the better team was the Ravens. We beat them. Y'all didn't. Ravens, you know that. Like I said, that was good old Hilaire with his fumble problem. Punk ass dude. All right, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm gonna be real with you. Um, if y'all didn't have Tyreek Hill. Y'all wouldn't have five wins, I guarantee it. I disagree. 
Okay, that's another topic for another day. Chiefs Raiders score prediction. You know, I'm going to say 28-14. Damn, you think we're going to beat you that bad? Actually, I do think y'all going to win. I, I think y'all, because y'all first, it's y'all home game. It's a rivalry game. And I know y'all are fired up from what's been going on. And y'all gonna try to display Deshaun Jackson like he's a shiny Ferrari when he's more like a Corvette, you know. No, Please don't say Corvette around Las Vegas. Yeah, that's why I said it because he's gonna crash. Oh, that, anyway. oh Jesus, that was wrong. I, you, you put it in there. I'm sorry. Was, and this is where weird. I get to be asshole, Rick. 31 24. I think it's going to be a higher scoring game because neither one of us have good defense. And it's like, you know, my boy Max, he said today when I was talking to him, he's like, why are we coming down on Kansas City when y'all got a top five quarterback and receiver? Exactly. We're still doing it. It's just the turnovers are magnified right now. But who laid the blueprint out on how to beat y'all? Don't, don't say Tampa Bay. No, y'all I, lost to us before say. you lost to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay didn't do a blueprint. Tampa Bay got took advantage of a team with a shitty line. No backups and had a Pro Bowl defensive line. And we had y'all at full strength. We had y'all at full strength. Yeah, I, like, I give y'all props for winning, but everybody don't want Tampa. No, Tampa didn't. If you give us back our healthy line, just like Bomani said, the Chiefs win that game. But I can't you know, disagree with that. When we I had can't. the healthy line in week, what, what, five, six, we handed their ass. They only came back because Andy put us in neutral. Remember, we put up 28 in the first half. The motherfuckers had three. Yeah. I'm just saying. Hey. But, you know, I don't I don't like to work, you know, actual facts. People like to be in make-believe. So, you know, just like Scotty think he should have got paid, you know, make-believe shit. Yeah, I, I ain't caring about him. All right. That's all I got for today. Um, appreciate you, my brother. Uh, as yeah. always, it's been good. I'm sure my high is right now. I can't believe y'all didn't get all this mess. Going crazy outside. It sprinkled for all of five minutes. And I was happy mm -hmm. about that. This is like a typhoon out there. My car is getting a good wash. Now I almost went to the car wash. I would have wasted eight dollars. I hope you the car wash where they give you a little voucher if it rains within 48 hours, we'll wash it again for free. They ain't, I ain't seen that shit ever. But no, we go uh, we go work on making this better. We go work on you not being an asshole. We go work on me not being so petty. It should go work itself out, you know. Let's hope so. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you're on YouTube, like, share, subscribe. Uh, leave us a comment on whatever platform you listen to us or watch us on. You know, that, that algorithm helps us grow. And we appreciate it, each and every one of you. Stay positive. Stay blessed. Kevin, take us on out. Just want to say for the record, the whole petty shit, I really need to work on it. As long as you know one is good enough, then I can work with that. Three or four, that's like a party. Um, I really got much to say. Hey, everybody be good. There's a lot of good books to read out there. Enjoy them. Get your dumb ass educated because some of y'all are slow. Um, we'll be back next week. We're going to do a better job because we had complete time conflicts this week. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, I guess that's really it. Y'all have a hey. good one. We'll holler at y'all next week. Side note, I, uh, I started reading yesterday because I wanted to, you know, add that to my repertoire, reading more. They say it's fundamental. I was on the uh, iPad, iPod, whatever it was, reading. And, you know, these and Kindle you things. Know which one it is. No, I, I I don't like those. I need real paper. I'm, I'm, I'm your, picking up a book with real pages. Did you have your readers on? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is where I... All right, this is my first test on not being an asshole. So I'm just going to say <laughs> good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. Later. <laughs>